Hello friends, uh, welcome to this uh, video on Swaption. Uh, in this particular video, I am going to take you through the concept of Swaption. Swaption is a type of derivative contract. So let me tell you in the beginning that you need to have understanding of basics of derivatives uh, to understand the concept of Swaptions. Particularly, you must know the concept of Swap and Options for you to understand this Swaption concept. So let me start by first telling you uh, what is Swaption. So Swaption, as the name suggests, is basically made of two derivative instruments. One is the swap and second is the option. So if you combine swap and option together, you will end up getting what's called as Swaption. That's, that's just uh, more of the breakup of the meaning of the word, but what exactly it is as a contract. So Swaption is a contract which is created from options and swaps let us understand what exactly is are these two concepts so options are a type of derivative contract that give the buyer right to buy or sell so remember the right to buy and sell both is with the buyer and what the buyer can buy and sell so buyer can buy or sell the underlying asset at a stated price before a specified period so that's very clear that if you are the buyer of an option you have the right but not the obligation to buy or sell an underlying asset before a specified rate at a given price and the buyer has to pay a premium to the seller in all the option contracts. So that's that's how an option contract works and the transaction happens at a strike price in case of an option contract. Now let us move to the swap and what exactly is swap? So swaps are contract through which two parties exchange the cash flow with each other. In layman's term, the swap would mean exchange of something. So when you say that I'm doing a swap with my friend, you are exchanging something with your friend but in case of a derivative contract it means that if you have an obligation say if you have to pay on fixed rate basis to someone you can exchange that fixed into floating because that would be beneficial for you know because say you have a floating rate loan payment uh, and the interest rates are going up you will have to pay more interest on your loan payment so what you do is that you convert your fixed rates sorry you convert your floating rates into fixed rates that's how you do a swap transaction so when we combine option and swap something that i've told you so many times we create a swap option an interest rate swap option which is a swap option contract okay is an option on interest rate swaps so what exactly are you doing here you are doing or you are creating an option contract on interest rate swap which means that as a buyer of this swap option you will get the right but not the obligation to enter into an interest rate swap. So you have the right, but you are not under obligation to enter into the interest rate swap contract. So let me explain to you some of the term related to swap options, which will make it easier for you to understand the overall concept. So like every you know contract, which is option contract, okay, here also you have two parties, the buyer and the seller. So buyer pays the premium to seller. That is the building block of any option con contract. Uh, swap options, uh, as far as their maturities are concerned, they are for different period and there, there's no predefined period, but typically they are mapped to the swaps contract. So they can be for a month, can be for say, you know, six months, or they can be even for a year. So, you know, in India, for instance, you have MyBer OIS swap even happening for a month's period and it can go up to 10 years, right? Uh, Swaptions are typically European style, which means they can be exercised only on expiry. And there is a strike price, which is the fixed rate in case of a swaption contract. So if you are doing an interest rate swap, there will be two rates, fixed and the floating rate. The strike price is made of fixed rate. Now let me move to the next point. How does this work? So let me illustrate it with the help of an example. Mr. X and Y enter into a swaption. Mr. X is the buyer of the swaption, which means he is the buyer and Y is the seller. Mr. X will pay a premium to Mr. Y. There would be a strike rate which will be fixed between the two. Swap transaction starts from 1st January and it is for 5 years. So Mr. X has to take a call whether to enter into the swap or not for which he has purchased a swaption contract. So before the start of swap, Mr. X can decide whether to enter into swap or not. If he finds that the contract is favorable for him, he will enter into swap else he will let the swaption contract expire. When will things be favorable for him? Example here gives that if he's paying the fixed rate and receiving the floating rate in a swap transaction, then floating rate must be higher than fixed rate for him for him to enter into the swaption transaction. So that's the basic of swaps. Let me tell you what are the types of swaptions that we have. So 
you have a pairs option and a receivers option pairs option means if you buy a pairs option you will be paying the fixed rate and receiving the floating rate that is how it works so when you pay the fixed rate and receive the floating rate you must uh, uh, you know be in a position whereby you are paying a lower fixed rate and you are receiving a higher floating rate that is what will make things favorable for you uh, when it is receiver swaption then in that case you are receiving the fixed rate and you are paying the floating rate so uh, since you are receiving the fixed rate you will always want fixed rate to be higher uh, and floating rate to be lower which we, because you are receiving re, you are going to receive the fixed rate so these are the two types of swaption that we have pair uh, if you have any confusion ever in your life you remember payer means you are going to pay the fixed rate receiver means you are going to receive the fixed rate that's how you have to look at and the other rate you have to pay or receive now what about expiry of the contract and the settlement so the expiry uh, of a there is expiry process which is defined so the if there is a buyer okay there is a strike price which is already there strike price is the fixed rate buyer will have to see whether the contract is favorable for him or not before the start of the tenure of the swap so the buyer can be in only two position one which is favorable for him it is called as in the money second which is not favorable for him which is called out of the money so the buyer will take a call whether to enter into swap or not and buyer will intimate the seller that he wants to enter into the swap he wants to use his option and that's that's how the expiry process starts you know there could be a physical settlement which means uh, you know this settlement typically happens after the buyer has given his consent to enter into the swap the transaction will happen at on t plus 1 basis a buyer uh, uh, you know uh, once buyer chooses to exercise his option a swap will be generated between the counter parties and periodically there would be a net settlement that will happen which means one party will pay at fixed rate other party will pay at floating rate and they will be exchanging the amount with each other that's how the net settlement will happen so cash settlement happens when you have exercised your option and you are saying i am going to use this option net settlement will happen periodically once the swap deal has started now let me move to the next slide and tell you that you know this is an example of receiver swaption so we know that in case of receiver swaption the buyer has to receive the fixed rate and pay the floating rate that is a concept that we have already discussed so having said this let me explain to you what exactly is happening here and that will give you a, an insight so we can see that this is a receiver swaption between two parties okay and the underlying is a vanilla inr ois swap with tenure of 5 years so this is a simple swap which is having a tenure of 5 years and the underlying that we are using here is the ois swap ois stands for overnight index swap currency is inr which is indian rupee uh, this is one month swaption which means the buyer has to exercise it with buyer has to take a call to exercise it within one month uh, the amount on which the swap is happening is 100 crore notional principal 100 crore means 1000 million for those who do not understand the concept of crore 10 million is equal to a crore right a fixed rate of swap is the strike rate which is uh, you know which is 5% floating rate is a benchmark rate which is published by an entity called as FBIL in India called as financial benchmarks India private limited party A is long which means party A has bought this contract party B is short which has sold this contract the swap swaption has happened between party A and party B uh, premium paid upfront by long party to short party which means buyer has to pay the premium to the seller which means A will pay premium to the B in this case and once the premium has been paid payoff on expiry will happen because see remember party A is going to receive the fixed rate and pay the floating rate because it's a receiver swaption okay so what will happen is that party A will see whether the floating rate is more than fixed rate or less than if it is less than the fixed rate then party a benefits because you are receiving fixed rate and paying floating rate so once the floating rate is less than the strike rate the party a will be uh, you know uh, making money from this there will be a payoff to the party a right that's what it means so this is the broader aspect of concept of swaption now let me take you to some of the quick quiz questions that we have here the first question is which of the following is considered as the strike rate for swaption contract we have already seen it is the fixed rate so we'll go with the fixed rate here okay the next which of the following swap keeps buyer the right but not the obligation to pay a fixed rate uh, and receive the floating rate so the moment you are a 
pair of the fixed rate uh, you know you you will be uh, entering into a pair swap option so you will be paying the fixed rate and receiving the floating rate so the answer is a here the next question is which of the below mentioned parties in a swap option transaction pays the premium it is always buyer to seller so i hope you have benefited from this video on swap option if you have benefited please do like this video and subscribe to my channel write to me on healthofmywealth@gmail.com if you want to know more about swap options and related concept thank you for your time and hope to see you in some other video soon